we ready? Okay. Um, tonight I want to share about the purpose of the Exodus. And uh, I'm just going to start by saying what I'm going to be sharing tonight on the purpose of the Exodus. You've probably never heard anything like it before. <clears throat> it will be up to you to search it out, but I'm going to um, um, I'm going to try to lay out the basic concept. And here's here's the deal about it is that I have been searching for a long time on a certain theme that I actually got from the uh, prodigal son story. Um, and it has truly just exploded. I have, there have been so many of the prophets that I've gone to just kind of, the Lord led me there to find that this same subject is there also. It is throughout um, the Pentateuch. Um, and so what, <clears throat> what this particular class is going to do is that it is going to give you a real picture of what I'll be sharing for some time to come. So uh, instead of going to a scripture first, um, what was the purpose? For bringing about the exodus you know okay so to deliver people from bondage that's the common Christian view to deliver people from bondage and <clears throat> it's way more specific than that um, surprisingly the exodus really isn't about people at all in the sense of just people. It's not about a people group called Israel, not in the sense of a people group. Um, it is, there is really only one thing, and, and the scriptures that I'll read here in just a minute are ones that I've read before, and you need to either memorize them or have the concept that's in it really well because it just takes off once you begin to realize what the Lord is doing. <clears throat> so his basic purpose, his basic reason for the exodus has to do not with a special people, but with a special relationship, a relationship between God's, the Father's firstborn son and himself, God's firstborn son and himself. So Exodus 4, 22 and 23, this is one, this, this is going to be a foundational scripture that you can find all through the Bible, not the, the quote of it, but the reality of it. <clears throat> Exodus 4, while you're turning, I'm a drink. 4, 22, 23. This is what the Lord is saying to Moses to tell Pharaoh. <clears throat> now shalt say unto Pharaoh, thus saith the Lord, Israel is my son, even my firstborn. And I say unto thee, let my son go, that he may serve me. And if thou refuse to let him go, behold, I will slay thy son, even thy firstborn. <clears throat> All right. So um, it is about... A father, I'll just say a father, the father. It is about the divine father wanting his firstborn son out of a people. Out of a people. It's not, it's not about the people. It's about the firstborn son that he is after. <clears throat> so um, the scripture here that we just read says that they may serve me. And we went over this last time that there were three examples where he used that uh, similar phrase. He said, let, you know, let my son go that he may serve me. Let him go that uh, he may sacrifice, come to me and sacrifice. Uh, let him go to me 
that we may feast together, have a communion feast, all right? As you know from the prodigal son story, that's a big part of it. There was the sacrifice, then the eating of the feast, then the, uh, then, uh, the eating of the, the sacrifice, and then the feasting time, the feasting time, okay? So, <clears throat> man, I'm gonna have to go fast if we're already, <laughs> I'm gonna have to read a bunch just to, to get it, because Ben's here and we had a good time sharing and I'd just like him to be able to enjoy where this, this is gonna go. All right, so maybe I will just read some. All right, so I want you to think in terms of deliverance or release when it comes to the Exodus. The great deliverance story is really more about release, not of Israel from Egypt, but of the firstborn out of Israel who was in Egypt. Israel was in Egypt, but the firstborn was in them. And we already had a session where we said, let my firstborn go. And he's, in that sense, he's talking to Israel because they had eaten the lamb and the firstborn was in them. And he's saying, this is what I want you to let go unto me, to bring unto me. Um, <clears throat> so let go that he might recommence the, res the special relationship the father had with his firstborn son. So let me just make a few statements here. It's not about God wanting sons. All right. Now you, you, sh you need to get used to that because I'm going to be saying that a lot for a long time, okay? Not only that, it's not about God wanting his son. All right, I know, I'm the one who taught you that, so <laughs> we'll, we'll go from there. <clears throat> um, it's not about God wanting his son, it's about God wanting his firstborn son. That's what he wants. And that's what the prophets, many of the prophets are talking about. And that's what the story, all the way, almost from, well, from start to finish through Genesis and the Exodus. And, you know, and pretty soon you're going, this thing is swallowing everything up. All right. So eventually here we're going to talk about how to let go the firstborn. Wouldn't that be nice? All right, <clears throat> at this early stage, it's important that we recognize that it is not just his son that the father wants, but his firstborn son. Why is this so important? It's important because as we eventually get into the New Testament reality of what God wants from us, we will need to have a firm grasp on what it means for Jesus to be the firstborn and how to let him go out of us. A firm grasp, or we're just trying to let God have his son, and that's very random compared to what this is. This is, this is, as I said, it's very specific what he wanted to let go. <clears throat> and if you compare the, pro the prodigal son story, you'll see it, you know. But we'll, we'll even clarify that more as we go. What will the significance of learning how to let the firstborn son go? What will it be? The first significant thing is so that we do not just give a son, you know, well, I want to be a son of God or whatever. We don't just give a son, but give him what he wants. The second significant thing is learning how to let his firstborn son be released to the father. If we do not do so, then a new crisis arises. The Egyptians can attest to that new crisis. Um, uh, the result... Uh, the result, when they did not do so, was the death of their firstborn throughout all Egypt. So there will be a price to be prayed, paid for not agreeing to this specific kind of release, not just give me my son. At that point, the anguish the Egyptians felt would be like what the father had felt for 400 years because the relationship is supposed to be in the promised land. And they had for, for 400 years been outside of the place that he made a covenant with the firstborn. With the firstborn. And we'll, we'll go back through, as Lord leads, we'll go back through all of it. Abraham was the firstborn, then Isaac, then Jacob, then Joseph, then, all right. Um, uh, 
and, and Israel, if they had also refused to release to the father's firstborn, would equally have felt exactly the same agony the father had over not having his firstborn. So in the eyes of the father, his, he had been separated from the, his firstborn. <laughs> we may, you know, I'm reading so I can get all of this for Ben, but, you know, so um, he had um, uh, felt this agony of being separated, and now when they're down in Egypt, he says, let my, first, not you, let my firstborn son go that he may come to me, serve me by sacrifice and by feasting on the sacrifice. Prodigal son story. <clears throat> All right. So, uh, how the, f the firstborn can be let go to his father? And how was it that Israel was to let go or release the firstborn to the satisfaction of the father? All Israel was to do uh, was to do it through means of killing and eating the lamb including showing forth his excellencies by placing his blood on the doorpost of the, of the houses where they ate the lamb. And this was a thing that's in Exodus where it it's, it's doesn't say put the blood on the doorpost. It says put it on the, on the doorpost of the houses of those who ate the lamb. It's so specific. And we make it all about the blood. And, we make, and we, when we make it about the blood, we make it about sins. And then we make it about us getting forgiveness of sins. And then it's all about us. And then we run with it. And what we're going to see is there's a, there is a division that's going to take place here. And that division keeps showing up all through the Bible. All through the Bible. All right. <clears throat> Showing forth his excellencies, which is what? The blood, the proof of the slain lamb. That's his excellencies. That's not, that's not murder. That's selfless giving. I wonder how many of us as the house of God have his excellencies displayed on us that people go, slain lamb is in there. Not only that, but they've been eating it. Remember that the lamb that God wanted in place of redeeming Israel's firstborn was itself a firstborn lamb. Okay, so <clears throat> you remember the story, and we don't have a whole lot of time, but you remember that he said, you know, if you do not let my firstborn go, then your firstborn is going to die. And if you, Israel, don't, kill the lamb and eat it and put its blood for an external display of the excellencies of his selfless life, then your firstborn will die. But if you do what I tell you, you will take a firstborn lamb and you will offer it in place of of your firstborn child. Okay, now this is really significant. All right, so uh, we find this in Exodus 13, and I'll just read this to you. It's if you want to write down the, the scripture, it's Exodus 13. Uh, well, verse 12 first, that thou shalt set apart unto the Lord all that openeth the womb, or the matrix it says here, and every, and every firstling, that's every firstborn. When it uses the word firstling in the King James, it's the firstborn, okay? It's just like the first fruit. Firstborn is for humans. Firstling is for animals. First fruit, it's all the same thing. It's all the firstborn, okay? Um, <clears throat> thou shalt 
shall set apart unto the Lord all that openeth the matrix, every firstling that cometh of a beast which thou hast, the male shall be the Lord's. And it shall be when thy son asketh thee in time to come, saying, What is this that thou shalt say unto him by strength of hand, the Lord brought us out from Egypt, from the house of bondage, and it came to pass when Pharaoh would hardly let us go that the Lord slew all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both the firstborn of man and the firstborn of beast. Therefore, I sacrifice to the Lord all that openeth the matrix, even males, but all the firstborn of my children I, red I redeem. Okay, so basically he's saying this. This big deal about the firstborn being mine, and that's what he's saying, the firstborn is mine. And I, we read some scriptures last time, and we'll, we'll get into that more in another session, another night. The firstborn is mine. And he says, I, it's been mine since Egypt when I did this. And he said, when your children ask, what is this going on? He's talking about what is this about the firstborn? He's not talking about the meal per se, although that includes the firstborn lamb that dies every Passover. They kill a lamb and they go through the process. And so sometime back when I read that, that verse, when you're, when thou, uh, let's see, where is it? And when it shall be that thy son asketh thee in time to come, saying, what is this? And I just thought, I, I'm going to get bold. I said, Father, what is this? I mean, I've got chills all over me right now. What is this? What is this? I want to know. Explain it to me, Father. Because he knows. He knows what this is. And I don't, and all I can do is speculate. So to the father, the Exodus is a story of firstborns and their importance to the fathers. All right, so in this, let me get a drink here. In this process, God said, kill a lamb, and it will redeem, it will save your firstborn. Okay? Right? Everybody following it? Then the Lord says, the firstborn that was saved is mine for sacrifice. Yeah, it's there. I mean, we've actually gone over the scriptures up to this time, but I didn't. I didn't make a big deal out of it because I wanted, hopefully, the scriptures are just getting in there. But probably next time, we'll literally go through the scriptures, and we're going to see a progression in Exodus where it starts that the firstborn is mine, and he says, the and give me the firstborn of every male and every beast and, and every, you know, all the firstborn is mine, and he's talking about for sacrifice. Okay, now, so, so what we say is, oh my God, is God going to literally, you know, I mean, that's horrendous. Um, we'll just think for a minute about Abraham offering up Isaac and was going to do it, and when he didn't do it, but was going to do it, God didn't say, oh, thank God you didn't do it because child sacrifice is bad. He said, I, you know, because you did this thing. Well, who was Isaac? In God's eyes, it was his firstborn. And we'll get into that in about 100 years from now. But, <laughs> but I mean, I've already, I've already taken off on all of that. Um, but my favorite is probably Esau and Jacob. So probably once we get out of Exodus, because that's my favorite. The story is just melting with goodness. It is so good. I'm serious. It is so good. So we have to remember 
that God redeemed the firstborn and the redeemed firstborn, he said, is mine and every firstborn is mine for sacrifice. All right. Now, I don't know that right now it's important. Probably the next, next time we meet, I'll get into there is a redemption of the firstborn. Um, but it's most important that you understand that the firstborn of Egypt or of uh, Israel in Egypt, that the firstborn belongs to God for sacrifice. And that's what he was talking about when, when if he's talking about his firstborn son in them. Let him go, let him come sacrifice to me, let us eat the sacrifice, let us become the sacrifice. All right. So, obviously, there's more to come, but this is really important that we get this last part. All right, let's take a break. See how fast this goes, Ben? <laughs>